Right, so it's all dry now. We've got um, Gehenna's Gold and Agrax Earthshade, nice and dry in the corners. So next one is going to be um, Auric Armor Gold. Now if you were going for like, again, the highest technique possible or like the best technique possible, what you would do is um, <clears throat> over these little wing bits, you'd reapply Gehenna's Gold. So if there's any parts that were like too dark or whatever, you know, you could you could work it. And then also when you put that on and you find out where you're going to put the uh, with the Gehenna's Gold, that will also serve um, to show where you would then apply the next highlight, which is Auric Armor Gold. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like um, the highlight layer first with Auric Armor Gold. And then that's sometimes you could just leave it there if you want. And then anything else will be like an additional step. So... In terms of speed painting, this is what I'd do. And obviously, um, while the video has been paused, I've done a few like little base coats and stuff. But the um, this is what I'd for a, a, the fastest technique possible um, that looks the best in the shortest period of time. And again, don't mean anything negative by uh, speed painting. Like there's nothing wrong with it. If you can get a good effect quick, then then fine. But obviously, the the, the main point is that it's still a good effect. It's not you've rushed. There's no cutting corners. It's just you've done it fast. So normally, I would do all the gold at the same time. But just to show this off, I'll just do it separate. So. I'm going to do some of the uh, auric armor. So again, this one needs shaking. It has like a, a cloudy, like a milky white um, a uh, medium with it. So again, you just need to mix in properly. If you've got proper time, I'd say, you know, I probably should have done this off camera, but shake it up for a couple of minutes. Just like that. Looks all right. So uh, with a zero again. A bit of water on the brush. And then, like I said, I use it straight out of the pot half the time. I think that's a bit of a no-no, but it's just what I do, just to show you. So, um, painting from shade towards light, if you know what I mean. So you got like this. The tips of all the uh, little feather bits. And again, don't worry about going into the recesses at this time. Because I'm gonna. you can do another shade. Or if you do go into the recesses, just don't worry. Like, you're obviously going to make mistakes. You're going to cock it up from time to time. Um, but don't worry about that, because you can reapply in a second, so I'll get down the centre of the screen and you can see this. So it is quick and it's not going to be like the neatest thing possible. I'm going to put a bit there. You know, it's not like the most amazing, neatest technique you've ever seen in your life. And uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be going for that really either. It's not perfection's not really possible, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a it's not an attainable goal. I think it's just one of them things you try out. You find something that works. So that, again, the brush angle is right. So if I'm going left to right, um, just a little bit there, then that's fine. But obviously, the way that after a bit, you're going to intuitively find out how to paint certain shapes, and that's like a, a color theory thing again. So the angle of the brush isn't conducive to flick, you know, inwards outwards. So I'm going to turn the model around, right? So, and like I said, I'd normally be wearing gloves or something, so you wouldn't. Um, wouldn't necessarily be touching any areas of the model with your hands because the oil from the fingers, I believe, can sometimes leave like um, finger marks or fingerprints, which you don't want. Right, that's pretty much that. And then again, from where the, the model is, so like I'm going to do this bit here and then. Like this bit on the inside, just there, and then the outside the same. Again, for me, it's mostly I don't know if other people do that, but it's mostly the same. Uh, it's about the brush angle, so like I'm really accurate going like this. Do you know what I mean? Like up top to bottom. So I've positioned the model correctly like that, but like the airbrush. Um, that's how you get the best sort of thing, and I use straight out of the pot. Um, works for me, might not work for you, but <laughs> it's just a little. Little things just there. Okay, I'm gonna do a bit in the centre. There's a little ultramarine symbol on the um, the skull. Otherwise, it you know I'd paint it different. So just there. And then yeah, if you go inside the the little recesses there, don't worry because you'll be able to re you can reapply the Agrax Earthshade and it'll redo it. Or you can do it um, as I'll show in a minute. You can do like a, a black line technique with just a, the you know straight paint. So this bit the same. I said, same as always, this is just how I do it. Like, there's no correct way, obviously. It's just tips and tricks, uh, odd little things I've picked up. So, again, a lot of it's brush, brush work, just do it like that. 
on edges. Um, so as the shape of each feather gets successionally, you know, uh, successionally, it's not even a word, is it? Gets gradually smaller towards the inside. You do like le slightly less of a highlight in terms of like area of the model like that. So that's pretty much it. You got um, like you know, nice, nice little transitions there. So from a distance, looks great straight away. Um, if you're rushing, or if you, you know, not again, not in a negative way, rushing. But if this, this was going to be like the, the thing, you could leave it like that. Um, if you just reshaded it. So in this situation, again, to add a different tone in, I would shade that with uh, Seraphim Sepia. Uh, it re-establishes all the uh, recesses and all the little bit, bits of detail and stuff. So like there, you can sit and um, let that dry for a minute, and then some of the areas it will like correct the little mistakes you've made with the Orikama Gold, obviously, because you, you'll you'll definitely make mistakes. Like you'll make mistakes all the time. It's about um, th I think the easiest thing is not to make them in the first place. But like you you're still gonna like you're not not gonna be perfect. So so there. If you're looking at the model, obviously it's um, that's probably the that's probably the angled photograph from probably like there or you know there or something. So you can get everything in. So you know that um, this is facing the sky and this bit's facing the bottom. So that with the the secondary colours, um, because of the way it's positioned, it's almost diagonal. So it's like that'd be straight on. So it's at like a forty five degree angle. So from there, from top to bottom, I'm going to shade with like a different colour, and top to bottom, which is like the gold, and then the the shade just in there. And then I'm going to shade off this this bottom rung just there. I'm going to shade this bottom rung and this inside. Um, this part and then the underneath of the skull um, which is where the natural light would fall on the model and then from this side because that's facing the sky this is going to be lighter um, just a bit of shade in there and then this side it's going to be light towards the very middle and the very um, the the, fi the side of the skull facing the sky I'm going to shade off this little edge bit or it's not going to be as bright as the others um, so uh, yeah, no, it's, it's again. It's just you pick up an intuitive thing um, over time doing this, and I think sometimes actually putting words on it's kind of difficult. I certainly have just never tried before. I don't know. So, what I would normally do now, very thin layer of purple, um, and again, that's really quick, really easy way to add like a nice value to the uh, to the miniatures. But of course, I'm going to also shade it with brown, uh, and again, in, in non metallics, you'd use green as well, and then a bit of a, a thing over the top. So just a bit of heavy violet that's too much but <laughs> we're gonna do right so I've got the uh, the double zero brush now bit of water now I would usually use uh, Vallejo or Lemian medium or Vallejo uh, glaze medium but because I want it to dry I'm just gonna you know faster I'm just gonna use water so same as the wet blending technique you would introduce the water just to the purple and then let it blend in like that so it sort of fades together and then now on the palette, you've got an area of very thin, thick, transition into like the pure paint on one side, so you can like alter it if you like. So I'm going to do it just for now. So do it right in the very recesses first, and then obviously you can uh, you can uh, do another layer, or you can make it thicker if you like. So I'm just getting the right angle on it. It's so like there, just on the very bottom half. Clean the brush off, and then with just water, take away some of that being sort of like wet blend it in, like so. And that creates like a little, again, just wash the brush off thing, creates little blends like there. So straight away, that adds a really nice value in, um, with no time. Okay, something like ten minutes in it, um, outside of drying times. So this one, just in there. Uh, a bit more. Right, so like that. So straight away you've got like a nice little purple effect. While it's still wet, I'm going to reduce that just a little bit. So that's it. Right, so there you go. And then on the inside of the skull, just there, I'm gonna like very, very, very thin layer of the purple just to sort of blend it all in. And then on the centre part, it's like just there, we've got like the flat bit. Do the you know, if I've put if on just this line here I've got dark to light, put it in the shade area, you know what I mean, just put it like, use your noggin, and then same on the side, down the top, there you go, and then, from, like I said, from the top, this area is facing the sky, so that's going to have 
um, a lot of the shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shade down at the very bottom just there. Wash the brush off. Kind of wet blend that in. Like so. And then across the bottom, because the model's like going to be you know like this, I'm going to do it across this bottom bit, the bit most facing the ground sort of thing. Like I said, you'll get an, uh, an intuitive idea of how to do that before long. And just in this corner as well. And then just like feather that in. So you can see there that I've got like a slightly more of the shade facing down in this corner because that's the, that's the side sort of like facing the ground. And then the, less on this one because it will be naturally lighter with the light hitting it, um, hitting it better. And then a very, very thin, almost translucent. A little bit just on the inside of the skull. Um, get that in shot. Let's get it there. So when it dries, you can hardly see it. But like I think that I think the brain knows it's there. The mind knows it's there. So straight away, again, ten minutes in, um, you've got four different colours straight away. The base coat, Gehenna's gold, um, the highlight of Auric armor gold. You got um, Agrax earth shade, and then you got the purple straight away. And that's I would normally leave it there. That's what I would do. Looks great, takes no time, whatever, but um, it's got like three or four different shades, tones, all the, all the rest of the different transitions and stuff. It looks really good. So that's that's what I normally do with a bit of an edge highlight. And with some of these, um, a very a very thin edge highlight of um, like one of the chrome, the Vallejo chrome, and you, you know, you're pretty much done. But what I'm going to do is like show you some of the... Um, like the black lining techniques and stuff. So I'd either use Mornfang Brown or, or Rhinoxide, or both, basically. Mornfang Brown first, because it's a slightly lighter shade, and then Rhinoxide in the thing. And then you do it like a um, like a black line. So I'm going to get a little bit of Mornfang Brown. I'm just going to shake him up. And then... So I normally work straight out of the pot, and I probably shouldn't do that, but what are going to do? So I'm going to put it on there. You want it... Water down just a little bit, just like that. So it's like there, fifty-fifty with water or something. So it's almost like a glaze, you know. And then around the very edges, around the very recesses. Sorry, just going to work that in. So just there, just in the center. And again, because I haven't done the, um, I didn't. Oh, just made a mistake there. If you do make a mistake, wash the brush off. And then you can just wipe it off with the, the brush and it usually gets rid of like any of the unsightly lines. Otherwise, um, you probably again definitely not supposed to do this, but you can sort of rub it with your finger. Anyway, yeah, so this is very similar to just doing another wash of the um, Seraphim Sepia if you've got like a if you made a mistake with the Auric Auric Armor Gold with a highlight. So just go back through again. Um, go over the bits you've done with purple as well. Obviously, like it'll stack together, sort of like um, between that and the purple. Will make a real dark thing. So I just nudge the camera again. So straight in there, and then down there as well. Now, if you wanted there, you could, um, and I'll just show you each individual. Um, feather like that you could go through and if you're going if you're doing a really high level technique that's exactly what you do um, you know to make to make I'm just gonna, I, I will I will do it just to show you but just just to um, just to make a, a very nice definition between each each one of the things so like that. and again so I just made a mistake there you can see where I've just like Done it too much. Got the clean brush and just like push it back into the recess. And then in between each one. Right, so I'm gonna do the other side. Clean brush. A bit more of the paint on the palette. And then, like I said, I draw on my hands. Probably shouldn't. But what are you gonna do? So yep, you got the thing just in in the corners just there. This one. And this bit. Just there. In this corner, just there, and then across there. And then, yeah, just like, again, no time at all, and you've got... Oh yeah, sorry, in this, uh, on the flat bits, just there as well. Right in the very corner. So that sort of, um... Show this one up. 
straight away, so you've got like that's five different colours now, five different shades. You've got definition, couple of shades, uh, a wash, a highlight, stuff like that. Uh, and if you're going to, again, if you're going you're gonna to keep going, you could stop at any point. You could stop at any of these layers and it'll look great or it looks it looks fantastic from uh, from a distance, from, you know, from all the way back here already. It looks cool and you can see everything. But a final edge highlight, I usually do a dry brush um, with a silver just from a certain distance. But again, I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not the best out there by a long way, but it's just just how I do stuff and like tips and tricks and again a lot a lot of stuff for me is just really knocking out good good looking uh, like tabletop stuff like it's fast like, it sounds really negative I'm not, I'm not trying to be like that it doesn't matter if it's fast I'm not talking like cutting corners again but just to do a good effect in a a relatively short period of time so yeah we're going to do the edge highlight now and then if you wanted to around the very well for now I'll just show you I've got this uh, Rhinox hide it needs shaking up which is the um, which is darker than Mornfang brown, so you can see that there it's like really dark brown. So we'll get a little bit of that again with the double zero Windsor and Newton brush, just around the side. So just on there, if I went across all the recesses with the brown, I'm going to do a very small amount, just mix with a little bit of water, just in the very the very darkest points, which is going to be there in the corner, and there across the corner, across the join where the skull joins up to the uh, wings just a bit like a black line and the same on this side just on the inside there on the inside of the uh, little crevice thing and the same on the other side so right where the skull joins the the wings which is where obviously like the dark would not only you know the light wouldn't fall in real life obviously there'd be a natural shadow there from this angle so I'm going to do it like that and then from the other side so again, for me, a lot of it's like brush angle, getting it, getting it in, and so you're not flicking in an uh, uncomfortable angle with the brush. And then if you wanted to, a very thin layer of this, um, like, like so, and you can see there that we've created like light at the top, fading across, like you know, laterally, down to the bottom. So you put a little glaze of the dark brown, wash your brush off, like wet blend that just at the bottom, so it's very thin. But it establishes areas of, of light and dark, and sometimes the purple can be a bit garish, so you can do that on this side as well. Then wipe the brush off, a bit of water, and then sort of like feather that back in, almost like a glaze on the on a certain area and across the bottom of the skull, just there where it's like where it would be the darkest in real life. And then same on the other side, I do a little glaze on the on the bottom, so it's there, and it'd be on this side, and then just there. So hopefully you can see all that. And then water, feather it in, feather it in. Right. So that's pretty much it. And then these little edge pieces just here, like that. Just a little line in the very, uh, the very darkest part. Right. So straight away, like it is, it is a combination of true metallic and, and non-metallic, really. And I'll do a separate video on non-metallic, even though I'm kind of crap at it. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. So. Um, like I said, you'd use a combination of Rhinoxide and, and Mornfang Brown. You can stop at any one of these layers. And then sometimes um, a very small amount of green looks really good. So I'll just show you that as well. I don't necessarily know the technique of where, you know, the, the theory behind where you'd put the green. But just a very small amount. Very thin. Um, like so. I'm going to put, just, just for example, like just there. Just in this corner. And then wet blend it off like sort of feather it in like that and then just on this side I'll put a little bit in I think you can put that, I don't know where you're supposed to put those glazes if you know what I mean but just add a little bit in from you know here and there and I think the the eye really picks it up so great, it's looking looking great and then again you know I think I think the brain knows so we'll put on this side we'll put a bit just in the centre at the bottom and then in a different like you know the same sort of place there at the top and then we'll feather that off. Uh, wet blend that in. There you go. Very thin, almost imperceptible. But like I said, I think I think the mind knows if you know what I mean. I think the brain knows what's what with it. Um, and I think that's half the point that you're creating values, different tonal values, different colour qualities, or whatever you want to call it, like little buzzwords and shit. So next one is a uh, Vallejo Crow. Excuse me. I'm going to do a little, um, just basically a dry brush with it. Again, you can go and do the edge hi highlights. Excuse me. I'm hiccuping. You can do it with edge highlight, but. Um, it's just very time consuming, so a small dash of that. 
get a crappy old brush uh, that you don't want to don't mind mucking up. So this one, which is um, a medium base brush from Citadel, one of the new ones, but I've just used it as a dry brush, so like, after a bit it's absolutely knackered. Get onto the thing. Now I want to rub almost all of it off. So like now it's just the tiniest little amount. And then, again in terms of angle, we want to go top to bottom so that it catches the edges of all this. Um, very, very lightly at first. You can add but you can't take away, that sort of thing, so, or well easily take away. So on that side, just at the very top, just to give it a little, just to make it pop really. And then other side, exactly the same. Um, so it's all about the angle again, so you know if you're going to come across like that, the edge of the brush is definitely going to catch all the details. And across the other side, do several passes and across a bit across the face, but again, it's easy to build up, but it's difficult to take away. So do um, thin layers first, like that. So hopefully you can see straight away that it's like just picked up all the edges really quick. It took about ten minutes, looking great. And then from the top of there, what I'm going to do, add a quick glaze. I would do either Cassandora yellow or Lamenta's yellow. Cassandora yellow you can use in the same way as the rest. It's like just a much much stronger pigment. But the um, the Lamenta's yellow is obviously a lot subtler. So I'm just going to shake that. Up. A little bit there, straight out of the pot with the Windsor and Newton Zero. A little glaze, and then sort of add it onto the gold when you're done, like that, all over. So I'm mixing it with water, just very thin again, straight out of the pot, but very, very thin. Uh, too thick, and it'll make everything look too yellow, but otherwise, um, you know, just a little bit so. Straight going from shade to highlight again. Well, it'll blend in all the colours. It'll take away a little bit of the silver, of the edge highlight. It'll blend in the browns, blend in the purples. Fade the greens off just a little bit. And there you go. So, anything else, I don't really know. This is just my recipe. So, all together you've got all the colours there. Again, I'll have them on the screen. But basically, again, it's gold. Aurikama gold. With uh, Agrax Earthshade, Seraphim Sepia. In the corners, we've got Heavy Violet and uh, some of the green mixed in a little bit and then a black line, Mournfang Brown, Nine Oxide um, and then yeah, Vallejo Model Air Chrome uh, as an edge highlight, so all together, hopefully you can see that from there looks really really nice again, it takes about 10 minutes and I would do the entire model, or you know, 10-15 minutes and I would do the entire model and I'd work on other stuff uh, like I've done some of the other base coats and that while these have been drying but that looks absolutely lovely and again, it takes no time so it's about that balance between speed and quality so that's pretty much it. I'm going to do um, a load more of these little videos on all the different colours and shit. But I'll do um, some tips and tricks about working the other colours and the recipes and stuff that I use for various things. But you can find all the pictures on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash powerhouse mixes. And all the other links to everything else you can find is on there. So that's pretty much it. Anything in particular you want to see, let me know. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching.